Hi, good morning. It's Saturday, October 16th. My name is Dave Coker, and this is Talking About Finance. Uh, how did we do on the S&P 500 last week? Well, we closed up about 1.82%. Not a bad week. You can look at the sector breakdown here. We were down Wednesday about 85 basis points. So really nice bounce back there. We're up about 19.4% year to date. So really good performance so far. We'll have to see if it gets locked in as we uh, get, get through Q3 earnings season. Oil right now is north of $81 a barrel. It's up some 68% year to date. And some research I got from Goldman oh, uh, yesterday morning, I believe it was, says we're going to see it break 100 by the end of the year. We'll, we'll have to see about this. Uh, I don't really have a view either way. We just have to keep in mind that expensive oil is a friction on the economy, and also it's inflation, which we're seeing a great deal of now. The VIX last week closed at 16.3. Seems like people are calming down. And having been in the market since I've been a little kid, guys, I, I would describe this as a classic melt-up. Absolutely everything is, seems to be going up in price, so just don't sit there. Buy something. Uh, participate, right? Preferably, you would buy a dividend-paying stock, and you've heard this before. Day trading, swing trading, no. You ain't going to be supporting yourself off that money. We've got the data from the tax people in the States. It just doesn't happen. Um, dividends, well, I'm doing 13.84% on my capital in my taxable account. And post-tax, it, well, it's paid monthly. And post-tax, yes. I can easily support myself and my family, a um, couple families, <laughs> with that money because I've been investing this way for decades. So if you're a self-described trader, and those are the people that I say they call themselves a trader, but it's just casual. They're, they're not doing anything on the tax return or anything like that. It's, it's just they like to boast about being a trader. If you're one of them, consider your sinful ways. Buy yourself some dividend-paying stocks, and you'll like the market better. You'll appreciate all the action in the market quite a bit better. I'll tell you something about the market. And once again, having been around the market since I've been a little kid, I've got a, a sense of the market that is different than a lot of people. All you need to know about the market is this. It is designed to inflict maximum financial damage on the most amount of people. And what happens is we see these cycles all the time, and we're approaching the euphoria stage, and there will be a correction at some point, or maybe even a crash, and that's when the damage will be done. <laughs> the biggest amount of people, right? Because there's an awful lot of people that are retail traders or investors, I should say, and they're getting into trading, and they're doing it through the Robinhood app. No, 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 please don't do that. Buy some dividend-paying stocks. But this is actually a very fascinating sine wave. And when you see this, guys, uh, if you just buy and hold and buy regularly like I do, you'll be much better off. You can just watch all this stuff go on with amusement. And since you're building up capital from your dividend-paying stocks, what you can do at that point is you can deploy the capital into cheap assets, cheaper assets, because they will overcorrect to the downside. We know prices in financial time series are what we call asymmetric. And we won't talk about that academic stuff, but it's actually true. It's one of the few academic theories that <laughs> we actually do see in the market. They're, they're asymmetric. They go up very, very slow, but they go down extremely fast. Oh, and here's something. My God, if you've been listening to talking about finance and reading my blog, you know I am seriously anti-debt. <sighs> I, 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 I really don't know what to say about this. I'm just totally shocked. This is Buy Now, Pay Later at Domino's. It's through an organization called Zilch, who is FCA registered, by the way. And if you can't afford that pizza on a Friday night, you can pay it back over six weeks. <laughs> what the hell? I don't about this, right? It's the craziest thing ever. Uh, yeah. It's just the most amazing thing. So cooking is easy. I worked my way through my undergrad cooking in a diner, and my wife pays for me to go to Cordon Bleu and take French cooking lessons. I still cook diner food at home. But yeah, learn how to cook, please. Don't, 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 don't be doing this by now, pay later stuff. So I'd like to start over, guys. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dave Cooker, and as you know, every Friday I buy Bitcoin. Been doing that for years. I did take a break for about ooh, about a year or so uh, for personal reasons. Per, per, well, we won't go into it now, but here's the point. We know that there's some Bitcoin ETFs being prepared. And this when I, I, I buy every Friday morning, so I got up around 4 a.m. as one does and pushed the money over to my the exchange that I'm using these days and bought some Bitcoin. And I was like, oh, that's a lot less than last time. What, what, what happened here? So I went and looked at the news and we got approval for a Bitcoin ETF. Now, guys, I'm very pro-Bitcoin cryptocurrencies in general. Uh, 
yeah, I'm, pr I'm pro investing and ETFs are, are superb vehicles for that. But a Bitcoin ETF based on futures? Well, let me tell you a story about an ETF called USO, US Oil. And US Oil is intended to track the near-term price performance of oil, physical oil. So I've got WTIC here, West Texas Intermediate Crude, and I've got USO, went back two years, and it's a performance chart, baselined it at zero, going back two years ago. Uh, oil's up 51, almost 52% over the horizon, and it looks like that USO, that futures-based ETF, is down well over 36%. So you got to be really careful. Do not be buying that stuff. You're getting exposed to something called roll yield, and we'll talk about that in a later later time and look it up on finance facts if you're really curious. Uh, you don't want to be holding anything that, that it does for long periods of time if there's roll yield. It just chews your capital up. It really, really does. And for any for evidence of that, look no further than this chart I made. This is, of course, some of the stuff that I make and I push out to my research clients in a little bit different context. And of course, they those people are paying. You're not paying, so they get, uh, I think there were about 2,000 words on these series of charts that I did about the Bitcoin ETF and stuff, and this was in the mix. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Now, <laughs> this is, you know, I don't know, people are sort of evil sometimes. I would never do this. But they, they're hunting down people, <laughs> they're real hardcore Bitcoin guys. They're hunting down people that, that had the audacity to diss Bitcoin. And this guy, Nick Allen, I have no idea who he is. Blue check mark, though, authentic. And you can see he said Bitcoin had crashed down to $2.70. Not, not, uh, yeah, that's $2.70. And said he didn't buy. And, you know, there was a little thread there that you can look up. But somebody found him. I don't know how they found him. And uh, basically said, is this guy still alive? And he says, yes, alive but dead inside, right? <laughs> So at least he was honest. He's not a nasty person, and I, I respect that. He, he uh, I don't know if he bought Bitcoin yet. I didn't really read the rest of the thread. This, this was something we were talking about on the Telegram channel, so you just got to laugh about that stuff. And now that we're starting to see nations adopt Bitcoin, El Salvador did. If you go on my blog, FinTech Flash News, you'll see that Ukraine did. There's about six other developing nations that I'm aware of that are in various stages of the adoption process of Bitcoin. And here we go, Wall Street Journal. Uh, I don't subscribe. If I did subscribe, I'd probably cancel my subscription and tell them why. Although this is an opinion page, so I guess it's okay. But uh, they're calling it a scam. And they're saying that it undermines dollarization. Well, here's a note, note to America. And I'm American, so I can say this, you can't. There's nothing that says the entire world has to dollarize. That's totally ridiculous. And yet here it is, the gloves are coming off and now they're starting to uh, uh, complain very vocally about, about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and things like that. Well, as Steve Jobs said, and remember, I've been buying Bitcoin since 2012. People used to laugh at me. As Steve Jobs said, first they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. And we're right on the cusp of winning, guys. That Bitcoin ETF in the States, that whole list that I showed you, it's coming. And it's going to be fascinating when it happens. Now, people always ask me, or a lot of times people ask me about the price of Bitcoin. Why is it going up? There's many, many different reasons. A lot of times people suggest it's due to an inflation hedge. Well, let's look at inflation. And we've been talking about it, as you guys know. I, I really don't like inflation. It's a tax on it. It's, it's an asymmetric tax in that uh, people that are liquid and have adequate cash flow. Hello. Uh, I don't really feel the pain as much as somebody who's living right on the edge. It's a terrible thing. It, it impacts the, the poor most severely. And this is, again, off my, my research note. I've been doing a lot of talking about, about inflation. And here we've got the price of two commodities that go into fertilizer. And check this out, guys. Wow, it's absolutely record highs, what we're seeing now. We're seeing one of them trading up to about 142. The other one's up to about 117, I believe it was. And yeah, this is going to impact everybody. Oh, let me rephrase that, okay? Everybody who eats. So I don't care if you're vegan, although that's radically cool if you're vegan. I don't care if you're a carnivore. I mean, yeah, it's your choice, but you're all going to pay. And somebody asked me when I was giving this presentation, why it was going to impact uh, carnivores as well. Because when they, when they grow uh, food, when they grow agricultural commodities, it's well known that they include it in processed food. And of course, we eat the commodities ourselves. We, we tend to skew towards veggies in this house. Although we do have meat. My wife is a carnivore. But aside from that, it's an, a, an input to animal feed. 
So they, they will feed uh, animals agricultural products. They, they just do. Um, you know, your, your cows don't eat meat. My God, I grew up on a farm. Uh, although that being said, they can eat meat. <laughs> a little known fact. But, but they don't eat meat. We feed them agricultural products. And yeah, it's going to be impacting absolutely everybody. Really, all you've got to think about is how can you make money and how can you have a, a, a good life and, and generate income such that you can achieve financial freedom. And again, off my research notes, I can't remember the exact context. This was from, from last week. You can see here, guys, the impact of unemployment or the relationship, I should say, with unemployment and education. So we've got overall unemployment. We've got the unemployment rate for high school graduates, no college. And we've got the unemployment rate for college graduates, bachelor's degrees. And once again, you can see uh, the rate for college-educated people is much, much lower than, than, than what it is overall or what it is just for the high school graduates. God bless them. They're trying. Uh, but yeah, so stay in school. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, once again, just don't sit there. Buy something. <laughs>